People who come into treatment with these disorders are terrified because they know they're going to have to confront food and they know that shortly after admission they're going to have to do this. They're embarrassed by their behaviours. It's, it's mortifying to be in a place where everybody knows what you're doing and they don't know whether they're going to be forced to do something they can't do or something they don't want to do. When they come in, staff and residents are very caring and very supportive and very careful with the new arrivals because they know what they're experiencing. Uh, one of the first things that happens is they're psychiatrically assessed and medically assessed and when they're coming in with an eating disorder they see the nutritionist and we're really fortunate and we've got an excellent nutritionist who's very clear with them so although it's confronting for them when they're presented with their meal plan at least they know where they are because one of the real fears when they're starting out is that they don't know what's coming. So within the first 48 hours, our expectations and their expectations are clear. And I think that goes a long way to relieving people's anxiety. The thing about our treatment here is it's very intensive and every moment of every day is planned based on therapeutic intervention. When a person comes in, they're assessed psychiatrically, medically, and there's a clinical assessment by their primary therapist, by myself. We then together draw up a treatment plan. And the first thing somebody does is they negotiate and agree their treatment plan so that they have goals they need to reach. We know that people coming into treatment, given their disorder, have issues centering around trust and that it's very difficult for them. So what we need to be is clear and consistent and structured so that they know what's expected of them and what's expected of us, and that they know that we're there to assist them in meeting our expectations. The therapeutic process begins when they make the phone call and then begins in earnest when they're through the door. When people come in, they take their first steps in looking inwards and looking at their internal life and understanding eventually what it is they've been trying so hard not to look at. Everybody prior to exit has to go through a detailed relapse re prevention plan and in that relapse prevention plan we go through in detail uh, what they're going to do if they find themselves slipping back. T to understand that you don't just suddenly find yourself purging, there's a stepwise progression, there are a series of triggers and we go through, we pay lots of attention to scenarios such as if this happens then what? We work with the client to set up as many supports as you can around you to, to, to know when you start slipping because the reality of recovery is you need more than one support. Uh, you need a, a range of supports, a range of alternative behaviours. It's very similar to a fire drill. When a, when a fire starts, you don't start looking for the fire exit. You have to know where the fire exit is well before the fire. To see people get well is a wonderful thing. I learn something new every day from my clients. They're there to teach me. Because part of this is a mystery. Part of this we don't quite understand. And certainly they don't understand when they're in the middle of it. So I think that's mostly what I get from them. They teach me and the person experiencing it is the person who teaches us. I think there's a huge advantage in us not being a medical unit because apart from refeeding, it's not a medical matter uh, unless your health's compromised. It's a, it's a psychological disorder. It's, it's very often a disorder of the spirit. So one of the most powerful things we do is look at the whole person. There are two other strengths, I think. Because we are not eating disorder specific, we are conscious of and can, can understand process addictions. And we know that depression and anxiety underlies most of these presentations, chemical dependency, eating disorders, very, very often. The other strength we have is that we do have people in for a number of different presentations, and they do link. There is a connection across all these disorders. They are, they are disorders of secrecy and isolation. People are embarrassed. Uh, they don't want to disclose their behaviours. They find it difficult. So to be sitting in a group where people are saying things that in life they would never, ever say, I think it goes a long way to enable people to speak.